Now let's get to Speaker Mike Johnson, who appeared on Face the Nation on CBS this weekend. Talk about the border, but then, of course, all CBS News wanted to talk about was the anniversary of January 6th. Have I mentioned recently that that is a date that will live in infamy? But Mike Johnson did a pretty good job parrying the attacks, as he often does. Back in... Uh, 2021, you were the lawmaker who circulated the the legal brief known as the Texas Amicus Brief, um, challenging the 2020 election outcome in a number of states. By the way, you notice the words, the use of the language here. You circulated an Amicus Brief known as the Texas. Brief. What do you mean circulated? He distributed. He he helped write it as a lawmaker, and he distributed it and put it circulated. It makes it sound like you're dealing with Nazi propaganda or you're passing things under the table surreptitiously on the dark web. It's like they choose these words very carefully, these journalists. Which by CBS editorial standards makes you an election denier. That's so, nonsense. Well, that's, election. can I get you on the record on that? I've like, always you, been consistent on the record. Did you read the brief? Did you get a chance to read what we filed with the Supreme Court? Well, I, I have read extensively some criticisms of you, that. You but read <laughs> This is this is this is why we love Speaker Mike Johnson over here. Is that he he asks the perfect question? So she sets it up. You circulated this legal brief questioning the validity of the 2020 election. That makes you an election denier based on our journalistic standards. And Mike Johnson immediately challenges those journalistic standards with a a simple question. Oh. You're, you're questioning the legal brief that I helped write and I distributed and the case that I made legally? Did you read it? Well, no, but I read criticism of it. <laughs> Is that not perfect? But I mean, we're going to get back. It's a great exchange and a great moment for Speaker Johnson. And by the way, one thing I like about him is that he delivers this stuff with a very good smile on his face. He actually is, it appears, a happy warrior. But quickly, our co I want to take, take a pause on this CBS News journalistic standards moment. 2020 election outcome in a number of states, which by CBS editorial standards makes you an election denier. By CBS editorial standards. Now, first of all, the real breaking news, and we probably should have led with this and retitled this video today, breaking CBS News has editorial standards. Who knew? That's a giant leap forward, seriously. But our friend Spencer Brown, managing editor over at Town Hall, uh, reminds us all what the CBS News editorial standards are. They actually made a big deal out of it. Let's, uh, let's blow this up real fast so we can get a good look at it. CBS News will now call somebody an election denier if you fit one or more of the following. Number one, questioned the legitimacy of Biden's election, said the 2020 election was stolen, repeated disproven claims of fraud, signed on to the Texas lawsuit to overturn the 2020 election, objected to 2020 electoral college count on January 6th, or supported uh, 2020 uh, something, probably Trump, if you supported Trump in 2020, but sadly, his arm is covering it. Uh, as Spencer Brown points out very helpfully, that CBS News's criteria now and their election standards will call anyone an election denier if they fit those criteria. It only applies to the 2020 election and Joe Biden's election win. It avoids every single Democrat who questioned anything regarding the 2000 Bush Gore election. The 2004 Bush Kerry election, and there were a ton of election deniers there. And then God knows the 2016 Trump Hillary election. You can question those elections all you want in the most brazen and unbelievable, over the top way. And CBS News will never refer to you as an election denier. But if you are the Speaker of the House of Representatives, with a history and track record of writing legitimate legal briefs and amicus briefs to the court, and you put forth a detailed legal argument as to why 
basic election protocols that have been followed in every election up until 2020 was violated without due process. If you make that claim, you will be an election denier. But Hillary is still free and clear. So let's watch how this goes now as Mike Johnson deals with this outrageous slander. That's so, nonsense. Well, that's, can I get you on the record on that? I've I always been consistent on the record. Did you read the brief? Did you get a chance to read what we filed with the Supreme Court? Well, I, I have read extensively some criticisms of you, that. You've read commentary about the brief, but not what we submitted to the court. But right? you recognize that President Biden won the 2020 election. Can you the just put president that aside? President Biden as an was issue? certified as the winner of the election. He took the oath of office. He's been the president for three years. What I, the argument that we presented to the court, which is our only avenue to do so, was that the Constitution was clearly violated in the 2020 election. It's Article 2, Section 1, and anyone can Google it and read it for themselves. The, the system mm -hmm. by which you choose electors to elect the president of the United States uh, must be done by the individual states, and it, the system must be ratified by the state legislatures. That is language, plain so language out of the Constitution. you still have issues Absolutely. with the validity of the 2020 election? The Constitution was violated in the run-up to the 2020 election. Not, not always in bad faith, but in, in the aftermath of COVID, many states changed their election laws in ways that violated that plain language. That's just a fact. It is. Thank you to our friends at MRC there for grabbing that clip and 100% correct. Everything that Mike Johnson said and the way he said it, and it just went completely over the head of the journalist there at CBS News. Uh, Jacqueline says that uh, she used to work for a CBS company and the CEO and his goofy staff always dished on Republicans. That company hates conservatives. I should have filed a lawsuit. You, you should have, Jacqueline. You still could. We'll put you in touch with a lawyer if you want. Maybe Speaker Johnson will take it up. Yeah, of course, that's the climate over at a media. But, and, and this is my biggest beef, by the way, because I've worked in liberal media institutions in the past. And my biggest beef with groups like this is that as, you know, an interview with the Speaker of the House doesn't just happen overnight. And, and, and she sat down with writers and producers, probably even somebody from the network or an executive, and they went through the questions and they said, here's what we should ask. And do you want to do this? And do you want to do this? And I guarantee you, there was no one in the room like Jacqueline. There was no one in the room said, hey, you know, Republicans think this way and they believe this. And if you approach it in this way, that's going to be really offensive to a lot of our viewers and people are you're going to lose credibility. And oh, by the way, before we challenge Mike Johnson on the details of a legal brief that he put together, maybe we should read it. Or maybe if we're going to challenge something specific, we should actually pull it out and have him answer directly to it instead of just say, well, if you don't accept what we've decided, you have to accept on the 2020 election, we're going to call you a name, which sounds a whole like, you know, a Nazi. They use the word denier on purpose, right? Holocaust denier, right? You see the connection there. It's the reason why they use the word insurrection, right? They pick their language very carefully. So if, if you don't agree what, what we say you're supposed to agree with, we're going to call you a denier, suggest that you're against our country and against our constitution, and we're going to make you have to defend that horrific belief that you have. But we're never going to actually pull out any details, any facts, or anything for you to answer to. And well, good for Mike Johnson for actually putting her back on her heels and saying, well, did you actually read it? Because here's the case we made. And that's probably the first time the CBS viewers have heard any kind of case made, let alone the people who actually work at CBS News.